Just who are you polling for tomorrow night? Tanya Harding or Nancy Kerrigan? We put that question to 500 L.A. residents in tonight's exclusive KCBS Action News bullet poll. The results aren't really all that surprising. Tanya Harding managed to get support from only 14% of the people, but Nancy Kerrigan had 69% polling for her. Everybody else said they'll root for somebody else, or they just weren't quite sure at this point. No doubt about who's the favorite in Massachusetts. That's Nancy Kerrigan's home state. In her hometown of Stoneham, the support is evident. There are signs. Nancy, we're proud of you. Go for the gold. But in an exclusive CBS interview tonight, Nancy Kerrigan says she can't live up to the expectations of others. I get disappointed when I miss something because I know I can do it, you know, and I know I can stand up. Well, why did I fall? And there's a reason. There's I dropped my arm or I rolled my toe over or something. And so then I go back and I'll do it the next time. And... Kerrigan says she's ready to skate tomorrow night. But does she wish Tonya Harding well? She says she wants everyone to skate well. Folks in Portland also hope Tanya Harding skates well. And tonight some of them are building up a real appetite for tomorrow's competition. Our Drew Griffin is standing by live in Portland. Drew? Bree, I haven't seen any signs around town yet, but I did talk to the head of the Tanya Harding fan club tonight. Elaine Stamp says Tanya Harding will pull through, and there will be a big party in this town tomorrow night to watch the technical portion of the program. Well, you can bet that that party will not be at Portland's East Bank Saloon. We probably sold about, probably close to about 50 to 70, I guess. Not Your Average Role Model has been a hot seller since it first appeared here five days ago. The bar that pokes fun at its tarnished Olympian and politician will celebrate Tanya's big skate with what else? An Olympic special. Okay, the specials, we have a, a club sandwich with uh, chicken soup. No, they are not Harding fans here at the East Bank, but they are fans. They do watch. Some even hope their hometown hopeful does well. I think she should skate. And if she does well and wins, then she should. She deserves it. Then there are those like Byron Rose, who proudly wears his T-shirt and hopes it's all over soon. Here in Portland, you see all the fans and everything nationally, but we don't really care. I mean, what? She's not even ranked. This town really is ready for the skating to begin. The Portland Oregonian headline today was, it's time to get technical. Tanya Harding will skate tomorrow night's program to Much Ado About Nothing. Bree, many in this town think that this will be Much Ado About Nothing once the skating does take place. All right, lots of folks are ready for it to be over. You're right. We'll Thank you, True. Respectable scores, but not high enough to put her within reach of a medal. The standing room only crowd was polite, but no more than that. As Harding left the ice, she avoided reporters' questions. Harding's scores put her behind Katarina Witt, and as other contenders skated, she fell further back. <laughs> Surya Bonali of France impressed the crowd and the judges with a lively athletic performance. 16-year-old Oksana Bayul of Ukraine skated a program based on Swan Lake and briefly held the night's top scores. On the ice, representing the United States of America, Nancy Kerrigan. But then it was Nancy Kerrigan's turn, and the crowd gave her the warmest welcome of the evening. From her first jump, she delivered near perfection. The skater, whose career seemed in jeopardy after she was assaulted in early January, performed with elegance and confidence. Tanya Harding watched it all from a skybox. Kerrigan was the clear winner of this showdown. Nancy, what did you think of the reception you got out there? It was absolutely tremendous, wasn't it? Yeah, it was wonderful. It's really exciting and... It's hard to explain all the feelings you get from that. No, I just was so emotionally moved by how she skated tonight because I thought she was so, so deliberate with everything she did. I'm so excited for Nancy. I'm so excited for her because she skated well all week long. She practiced really, really well, and she did it. The judges agreed she did it with scores that put her in the lead in the first night of this two-part competition. When I'm on the ice, that's where my mind is and what I'm concentrating on because I've been working for this for a real long time and 
I'm here to do my best, and I just skated great, and I'm real happy. And Harry, we'll try to keep you posted watching this, uh, watching this training session here. We'll keep you posted on what has happened to Oksana and uh, Tanya Shushchenko here. Harry? Yeah, that is a huge story because Oksana Bayul is in uh, second place right now, and Shevchenko is in fifth place. This really could have an outcome of, uh, uh, affect the outcome of what happens uh, tomorrow night. John, thank you so much. Finally tonight, leave it to the people at cable TV's Comedy Central to come up with a spoof of the whole Harding Kerrigan incident. This just in. Figures close to Tanya Harding have been implicated in the assault on rival skater Nancy Kerrigan. Film at 11. Jeff? What did you feel, sir? Jeff! <laughs> when you make the comedy circuit, you have made it. <laughs> in one way or another. I don't think that's the way she wanted it. <laughs> Aww, nothing sacred, you know. How big of a distraction is it? Well, I think it, it's a big distraction. Uh, there's enough media on any normal Olympic year, but with this, it's uh, been quite a unique situation. And, you know, maybe by now, after a month of, of this going on, they're a bit numb to it and, you know, doing yes. their best to ignore it, hopefully. Probably not, though. <laughs> there are some other medal contenders, though. Let's take a look at a couple uh, and begin with Oksana Bayul, who's favored, actually, to win the gold medal by a lot of people. You like her? Yes, I do. I've, this is the only performance I've really seen of hers other than an exhibition, and I was very impressed with her maturity on the ice concerning how young she is. What Does it take maturity to be in the Olympics? Is it a mental thing? or I mean, you've done your program so many times. Mm -hmm. What does it take to win a gold medal in the Olympics? Well, you've got to be good, obviously. Right, you've got to be good. You have to be prepared and um, just mentally tough once you're out there. You have to know that you can go out there and do this. You've done it uh, all through the year. And just believing in yourself, I think, is uh, the number one thing. Mm -hmm. The competition begins tomorrow night, of course. And uh, what do you think the judges are looking for? Let's look at Surya Bonali, because mm -hmm. she's very athletic and physical on the ice. And does this work, you think, in 1994 for the judges? Oh, well, it's hard to say. Um, you know, Surya definitely has probably the most ambitious long program of the ladies technically and she's really worked on her style so right now being the European champion coming into these games that looks really good for her. How do you know what the judges want because we watched Torville and Dean last night and they I thought had a brilliant mm -hmm. program right. uh, and then they go ahead and they say well this jump was not right and this sort of thing I mean how do you know or do you know what the judges want or you just kind of take your chances not really uh, you don't know who's going to be on your panel until you get to the competition so this program you've been doing all year you want to I guess use something that you think will cover a wide range of, of preferences out there but um, you know, as long as you go out and skate strong and skate clean then you, and don't give them any doubt who's right. the best, then yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, what about Katarina? How do you think she'll do? I mean, you, know. I, you know, Katarina's been skating strong. I hear she's practicing very well and uh, she's here determined to, to do well. So. I think it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I think she's admitted she really is not going for a medal. That the point is, is that she came back. Chen Lu, we have some uh, videotape of too. I'd like you to look at her, and uh, she's a young lady that uh, has grown a lot in the last. She couple has of years. grown, probably four or five inches, I'd say. What do you think of her abilities on the ice? I think she's a very pretty skater. She uh, uses the music really well, and. Uh, even though she's grown, she's kept her strength, which is unusual. Uh, usually you see them go down a bit. So I know a lot of people haven't been talking about her much. She is two-time world bronze medalist, so you definitely can't count her out. You've been touring and uh, skating well, and people are enjoying you. How about a comeback for you in 98? Oh, who knows? Really? Four years from now. Would the I door think be would... open on that? Um, I think it would be more possible as a pair skater, mm -hmm. really, than a single skater, I think. Um, you know, all that happened in 92 was all that I wanted, and if I go back, it would be, probably be pairs. What's the biggest thing that changed about your life after winning a gold medal 
Last time I sat down with you, you had the gold medal around your neck. Right, I remember yeah. that, right in Albertville. It's been busy. I thought after the gold medal I could coast a bit and, and just enjoy life. But mm -hmm. I've been enjoying it, definitely, but it's been on the road. A lot of traveling, a lot more performing, and uh, just keeping busy. But I love it. Yeah. Well, you're still America's sweetheart, and everybody still carries those great memories from Albertville. And thank you for coming by. It's fun to see you. My pleasure. Thank see you for you, having Kristen. me. <laughs> we come back here, we'll be joined.